Today on D3 Live, we're going to be talking about the next generation of Windows operating system, Windows 8. So recently there have been a lot of leaked builds of Windows 8 that have been circulating around the internet. And from what we've seen, there are definitely some nice new features that are going to be coming. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about a few of them. So the first one is better tablet support. Now Windows has been available on tablets for quite a while, in fact way before everyone thought of the word iPad even. Um, however, they've all been still really rooted in their desktop base. Now sure, yeah, there might be a, you know, a t keyboard, there might be um, you know, better multi-touch support, There's, there, there are a few things in Windows 7, and there are some okay Windows 7 tablets. However, Windows 8 looks to be the first version of Windows that has been fully optimized for the tablet OS. So what this should mean is, of course, better multi-touch support. Um, you know, Windows these days is almost made for styluses, so you know you're gonna have real nice multi-touch support. Um, but it also should be optimized for ARM processors. I know what this means is that there are two major types of processors that's available on the market. Well, three technically, but we're just going to talk about two. Um, so there's the standard processor, which you might find in you know your laptop or your desktop, and that's usually made by Intel or AMD. And while that's great, it's not particularly power efficient. On the other hand, there's a called an ARM processor, which we might find in you know your iPhone, your Android phone, or of course any of the major tablets. Well, Windows 8 will support both of these architectures. So, you know, if you want to run Windows 8 on your you know laptop or something, you can absolutely do that. However, there will be a specialized version for tablets that will run a lot better. Uh, it should have really nice battery life because it can use those more powerful, uh, power efficient chips. Um, so that's definitely one really good thing that I'm looking forward to seeing in Windows 8. Another thing is the Windows App Store. Uh, and of course, there are app stores springing up all over the place. Of course, you can get the Mac App Store, or there's the Chrome App Store, or I believe they call it the Web Store, but it's basically an app store. And there also looks like there will be a Windows App Store. Uh, now, this is not going to be a particularly amazing thing, in my opinion. Uh, it's probably mostly just going to be a general store that can just allow you to get a few applications, games, that kind of stuff, a little bit easier. Um, to be honest, I actually wouldn't be surprised if they you know, put that out for Windows 7 or something, just because it's a really basic and simple feature. But I definitely would expect to see this in Windows 8. The next feature, and this is arguably going to be one of the defining features of Windows 8, is the addition of the Metro UI. Now, if you guys are familiar with the Metro UI, it's of course started out on Zune HD and is available on all the Windows Phone 7 devices. Um, it looks like it will be making an appearance on the desktop with Windows 8. Um, so, Metro UI is a very cool, very, very nice looking UI, in my opinion. It's mostly based on tiles. Um, and it's a very artistic and nice looking uh, user experience. So if you guys are interested in seeing more about it, I definitely recommend just take a look at like a Windows Phone 7 device or something and you really get the idea of how Windows 8 could work. For the second segment of D3 Live, I'm going to be taking live questions from everyone in the chat. As always, every episode of D3 Live is filmed in front of Blog TV and we have 50 people in here right now. So let's go ahead and just take a couple of questions about Windows 8. Um, is Windows 8... Well, I mean, I'm sorry, do you think Windows 8 will boot faster than 7 or Vista? Uh, yeah, I would imagine so. Typically, that's what they're always trying to do is optimize the boot process. You know, they want to speed up. And, of course, Windows 7 was, I believe, a little bit faster than Vista. And I would imagine that Windows 8 will continue to be faster. But um, if you're looking for, like, an instant boot up times like Chrome OS or something, I don't think we're going to see anything like that. Um, unless they just totally redesign Windows, which it doesn't look like it. It looks like they're going to continue to keep the base of Windows 7 and just upgrade it and just, you know, add stuff on top of that, just like they did Windows 7 on Windows Vista. Um, what do you think the price will be of Windows 8? Uh, most likely the same as, you know, the same upgrade prices. Uh, I believe Windows 7 is about $100 for a uh, system builder's copy, and I think it's about 170 or so for the standard copy. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure that's just what they'll do. I don't, I don't imagine they'll make it way cheaper, way more expensive, or anything like that. I think it'll probably be about the same. Um, what... Uh, what do I think Metro could become the tablet UI of Windows 8? I'm um, actually yeah we were talking about this a little bit on the live stream before uh, we began recording. Um, I think that's an interesting concept because um, obviously you know there's, there's a very different UI that you need if you have a tablet or if you have a desktop. You know obviously a desktop you know you're using a mouse and keyboard whereas on a tablet you know you're just touching. So um, I think that there are definitely some interesting things to say about that. I mean on the one hand I could see that they could make two separate versions of Windows, one for tablets and one for desktop, you know, for the tablet version it'd be totally tough to optimize with the Metro UI where you know you go through all your folders and everything, but it's it's more of a Metro UI, more, looks more like a traditional tablet, and they could have more of a traditional like Windows 7 style UI for the desktop, laptops, all that kind of stuff. On the other hand though, that might be a little bit much, typically they don't like to break it apart and you know make two totally separate operating systems. So um, I think we'll have to see about that, but I definitely do think, do think that there's something to keep an eye on, and I think that no matter what, we're going to see at least some of the Metro UI trickle down into Windows 8. 
Uh, will Windows XP finally be replaced by Windows 8? I hope so. Um, it's kind of surprising. In fact, I believe even the, uh, even up till uh, right now, Windows XP is still the most popular operating system in the world. Which, uh, considering it's like 10 years old, that's not half bad. But yeah, I think Windows XP. I mean, obviously they're not. They're, they finally quit making Windows XP computers. It's pretty hard. I think you can still get it. There's a few different ways, but for the most part, everyone's still uh, now getting on Windows uh, 7. So yeah, I think by the time Windows 8 comes around. Uh, Windows XP will probably not be around, or it, it, it won't be, not that many people will be using it, I suppose. Um, what do I think of the portable workspaces features of Windows 8? Uh, yeah, that's actually a great point I didn't get into in the main video, is um, one thing that, that is planning to be uh, supported in Windows 8 is portable workspaces. So, um, if you ever used Linux, you're probably familiar with it, you know, just take like Linux, um, you put whatever your favorite distribution, you put it on a USB drive and you, know, you can go wherever you want and boot off that no matter what computer you're really on. Well, it looks like Windows 8 will support a very similar feature, although how the licensing will work um, and all that kind of stuff, I think there are definitely some uh, some questions there. I would imagine it's probably just Windows 8 to Windows 8 computer and some stuff like that. But yeah, I definitely think that will be a really nice option. Anyway, guys, that's it for this week's episode of D3 Live. If you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe. I do these every Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. So feel free to subscribe. You can watch the videos uh, recorded and edited like you're watching right now on YouTube. Or you can come by and see it all uh, be taped live.